Welcome to Retail on the Go, where we explore the dynamic world of self-service commerce. Presented by Cantaloupe, helping the world buy it and go. Today we're talking about security in the retail industry and how to secure your micro markets. Ready? Let's go. First of all, thank you guys for tuning in to today's episode on the podcast. This is episode number four, Securing the Goods and How to Keep Your Micro Market Safe. Uh, today, we're going to be going over security of micro markets, theft, different hot topics that clearly have been kind of really big impacts kind of throughout the last couple of years as micro markets have started to expand. Today, we it will be me and Max, as well as uh, Tony Dana. Tony, do you want to give a quick little background on who you are and kind of your backstory a little bit regarding micro markets? Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks for having me on, guys. Um, Tony Dana, uh, been in the vending industry for about eight years now. Um, started with Three Square Market, where we were a micro market provider uh, to the vending industry. Uh, spent five years of my career growing uh, micro markets, specifically with Three Square Market um, in UK and Europe and then um, acquired by Cantaloupe last year. So providing as much insight as possible on micro markets to Cantaloupe. No, that's great. I think some of the stuff that we're gonna talk about today is gonna honestly be come kind of the most important stuff for operators, especially because you know the biggest thing that you hear about from vending operators, or at least from what I'm hearing from my operators, is they've done traditional vending for years. They want to get into micro markets, but um, you know, the deterrent or the thing that they've always kind of feared of is theft. Theft, security, different things like that. And I think those hot points today we'll definitely be able to cover and kind of give operators kind of some peace of mind as well as let them know some solutions that we have to kind of go hand in hand with their problems. Um, I know we have some some topics to discuss a little bit today regarding general retail security. Um, did you want to kind of lead off with that, Tony? Talk a little bit about, um, it seems like you have a couple of general retail locations in which you started doing micro markets and different things like that. <laughs> yeah, so um, it's evolved a lot since when we first started. I mean, um, the, the biggest thing was, um, you know, having a camera solution there. And then what everyone in the vending industry gets pretty frustrated with, well, you don't want to have someone sit there and watch the feed, you know, 24 hours a day and try to catch every single person. Um, so what could happen was it evolved and actually three square market was the first one that came out with, um, a, uh, abandoned shopping carts. Um, so when a consumer scans items at the kiosk and they hit the cancel button before it, um, uh, finalizes a transaction, it timestamps it, puts it on the back end. And now you can go and look at your CCTV camera at that specific time and date. Um, and look and see if you can match up that user and then watch, hey, did they walk out of the market? Now you should have a still image of their face, plus you get the video feed from the CCTV camera and you can bring it to the location. Um, so that's kind of where it evolved. And now, you know, we've got companies like Panoptic who actually do a lot of that, that ground, groundwork for you. So their system will plug into that abandoned shopping cart and then they'll take the 10 seconds or 15 seconds before and after, and they'll just send you an email with, you know, X amount of times that that happens during the day. So from a text side of things, those are, you know, the options within a micro market. Um, I do think, um, I think one of the, in, in my opinion, you know, beyond just tech, I, I do think it's important for you to have, you know, a camera and then also have a monitor. Um, that shows that you're being watched in the market. I mean, that's going to deter a very, very high percentage of people. You see you're on camera. Most people are not going to risk their job to, you know, steal a candy bar. But there are people out there um, that will do that, especially in these times when it's a lot harder, you know, to move on from employees. Most employers need these employees uh, to keep the operation going. So that's where it's important that you do have the evidence of the the CCTV camera plus an abandoned shopping cart. Um, no, that's great. Side, that's that, that's kind of where I think 
we're at right now with the Nike market. It kind of feels like uh, just kind of a duplicate of what you've seen kind of in retail in terms of, I don't know what people talk about, but like in terms of Best Buy electronic stores where you're seeing these cameras kind of face in, everything's locked up. There's no way to kind of access the product unless you kind of click a button or whatever the case is. And I could definitely see how kind of seeing yourself commit a crime or stealing something on camera can definitely deter and make you kind of think the other way. Where do you suggest placing these mar- micro markets, Tony? I mean, everyone kind of Kylan hinted at it. I just got back from NRF. And one of the craziest things that the big teal r- retailers are doing is they're locking everything behind Kylan hinted at it behind at getting an assistant over, going and unlocking it. And it's some people might be a little bit deter- deterred to it. Where do you suggest placing the micro markets in, in the uh, buildings that they're being placed so you can kind of have an extra set of eyes on it? Almost. Yeah, I, for the most part, I always recommend that there's there's got to be some sort of a barrier. So if you're going into your place of work, you know, you're an employee. So that's a place of barrier that's going to keep, you know, call it whatever riffraff kind of out of there. Um, if you've got kind of a higher end condo complex, you get your key fob to get in there. Um, if you've got a shared office space with multiple different businesses in there, Again, usually you've got a front desk receptionist that's not going to let people that, you know, are not in there every single day. So those are the, the easy, easy answers. Um, you know, we do have operators, um, that install micro markets in shopping malls. Um, so I, I, I think the unique thing that this operator does is he's got two way camera systems, um, uh, going in that market and he does have an employee. That is watching all, you know, I think he's got somewhere around like 25 to 50 malls, somewhere in between those numbers. And that employee's full-time job is to watch all the cameras from all the malls. And that if they see anything suspicious happening, they're speaking directly to that customer through the microphone of the, uh, the cameras. They're saying, Hey, you know, sir, ma'am, can I, can I help you? I can see that, you know, you're, um, potentially walking out without purchasing something. And then they get the person, you know, coming back in. So, uh, depends on the location, you know, how detailed of security measures that you want to take. But, um, in my personal opinion, the, the safe route is always exactly where we are as an industry, putting it in offices, uh, putting it in bar- apartments, putting it in gyms. Um, high end condos are great. Um, you know, car dealerships is another one uh, that I think there's a lot of potential for these micro markets. And, um, you know, most of the time people that are in there, their car is getting worked on and they've given credit card details. So the likelihood of them st- stealing a Snickers bar when they know, you know, this car dealership has my credit card and um, they've got some things behind it is, is very minimal. So as much as I want to say, it's like we, we pigeonhole micro markets into this segment, we've got really creative operators out there um, that says that there's more places that you can put them and you don't need to um, get hung up on, on theft as much as some, some people do want to get hung up on theft. Oh, absolutely. And it seems like kind of the way things are moving, you're definitely seeing a lot more people become more used to kind of the self checkout kiosk idea. I mean, you're seeing it everywhere. Walmart's targets. I mean, big retail stores, people, are getting used to the idea of, you know, not really having someone walk them through the process, but scanning a product and grabbing and going. So uh, I definitely can see that. And I know you yeah, kind of think talk- about it. <laughs> Just in that sense, you think about it, micro markets in the vending industry kind of introduced self checkout to the rest of, you know, all these, uh, these, these retail stores and like, we got a lot of people used to using self checkout. So I always do kind of hang our hats on that as a vending industry. We were uh, pretty forward thinking compared to some of these other convenience channels. And, and it's funny because years down the line, people won't expect uh, where, where did micro markets come from or this idea of scanning stuff out and not having any cashiers or anything like that. It's like, nope, that came from the vending and micro market and vending industry. So that's, it's great to see. Right. <laughs> Kind of moving on to the, some next topics. I know we talked about, you know, you, you discussed theft isn't really the big thing to have to kind of hold your hat on, but the people that aren't really necessarily utilizing kind of the features that we uh, can show off in terms of, you know, putting that layer of barrier of whether it's putting in smart cooler, smart locking technology, whatever the case may be, 
what do you think the average theft is in terms of what you're seeing kind of for large locations that aren't utilizing these uh, technologies like cameras, signage, um, TV monitors, or even smart locks on coolers and different things like that? Yeah, so if you take zero measures whatsoever, um, you know, in a lot of sense, you're, you're asking for it. <laughs> um, so the, your, your theft is likely going to be in the 10% range. Um, uh, I believe you're going to cut it down, you know, um, at least by 3% just by adding the camera system and put a monitor on there. Um, you could knock it down by a couple more percentages. Um, signage within the market, you know, um, I think what, what I always talk to operators and, um, when I was in the UK, micro markets were brand new. So every question, um, was on the table for these operators. And, you know, what I always guided them was the most important thing is the conversation with the location. Um, so immediately what we're going to do is we're going to take, um, what you previously had was maybe vending machines, distress purchase. You can only get so many products in there. Might be a spin, a wheel, uh, a wheel of death, um, with the fresh food. So like, you're looking in there. Is that sandwich? Does it have bold on it? Is it edible? I don't know. Now you're giving them a nice micro market. They've got a bunch of new options. Went from having 50 SKUs. Now you've got potentially 500 different products in this market. So you've just given them, you know, a huge enhancement. HR should be ecstatic. They are now the hero of that, that office workplace. All the employees don't have to go outside to go get, you know, their snacks or their lunches or, um, you know, various energy or pickups throughout the day, it's all right there and it's good quality stuff. So what I'm asking you, I'm the vending operator, I'm, I'm asking you the location. Um, we're okay with the industry average in NAMA. It says the industry average is about 2% theft in micro markets. We'll cover that as a vending operator. Like we're willing to eat that cost. Internally, we know we're going to add that 2% down to our product cost. That's a wash, not a big deal, but with our handheld, so on the cantaloupe seat side of things, we go in there, our drivers can do all their inventory checks. They're doing that on a daily, weekly basis. If it gets beyond 2%, do we have the ability to send you an invoice for anything above and beyond that? Most likely, especially the location just got elevated with micro market, they're going to say not a problem. So that's one way that you can subsidize, you know, the theft. Um, as long as your drivers are doing a good job marketing it. Then you're going to hand it off to that location. And now that HR is more invested in that theft that's happening. So when you send them the reports from the CCTV camera, the abandoned shopping cart, and you say, Hey, I've got this guy, you know, Jane Doe. Um, and he continues to show up on these. Uh, can you do something about it? And realistically, if one employee gets made an example of for stealing, theft gets cut immediately. No one wants to be the person that gets sacked for um, stealing a Snickers bar. So as long as you have those good conversations, you're providing good service, uh, the dialogue with the HR, the HR is excited about this micro market. You didn't just go in there with the micro market and put grid wall, you know, against the wall, kind of did a glorified vending machine. It doesn't look very good. You go in there with a high end looking micro market. It's got that Starbucks caribou feel. You're using good wood quality, good kiosks. You get good features of the system. Then it's very easy for you to have those conversations with the HR and be able to curb theft. But I do think it's important that you set the precedent. We'll eat theft at 2%. Anything above and beyond that, we want to be able to send you an invoice for it. So, um, you know, you can have all these technologies, but I still do go back to is that re relationship you have as a vending operator to that location um, is the most important theft deterrent. Because if they're willing to get behind you when theft is happening and they see the value in that micro market, then uh, theft becomes less and less of an issue because it's more of a team that's working together to curb it. Absolutely. It's all about just kind of finding a perfect marriage kind of in terms of just a, a company or a location that will back you up while also at the same time being able to allow you to provide that good service because it is an amenity. It is a luxury to kind of have a nice market and keep people, keep morale high, knowing that, you know, if someone's having a bad day, they need a quick energy boost. They can just walk downstairs and grab a nice energy drink versus having to go wait for their lunch break or wait somewhere to go drive somewhere and do that. So it, it definitely is an amenity. And 
I think locations definitely do see that the longer that you've that micro markets start to kind of linger around and as people start to see how much it can impact. Um, it kind of reminds me of an example I went to down to in Ohio, me and Kirk Johnson. Um, we were down at a local operator. Um, he was at a, it was basically a building that creates seatbelts. And if you literally looked at like Taco Bell or typed in fast food on maps, the closest restaurant was literally an hour away, like 45 minutes plus. And it's one of those things where if you're somewhere extremely remote like that, you know, being able to have a huge micro market downstairs where your guys can go out, grab something to lunch or grab something to snack on, eat, whatever the case is, while staying um, on site is 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 great because guys aren't getting right, written up from, you know, being late from coming back from lunch, different things like that. It, it really is an amenity. and You can see kind of the impact on what it takes um you know, what locations really want. So they'll back it up if, if you guys make sure that you get contracts or whatever the case is. Do you feel like that's kind yeah. of the most way that you see is people trying to promote to get contracts written by locations and signed? Yeah, I mean, so there's a lot of, you know, vending companies out there. I don't know if like race to the bottom is the right term, but they'll do anything just to get that new business. And, um, you know, they put themselves in a bad situation. The most responsible vending companies that do the micro markets the best um, are going to make sure that they're going after this location. They're going to get what they need to be successful. So they're going to look at um, how much spoilage am I willing to take on? So this site might want every sandwich under, you know, the roof. Um, they want every dietary need, uh, but you as a vending company know not everything's going to get ate there. So, what you got to make sure you do is um, take care of the amount of spoilage that you're willing to take on. Make sure in your contract you get the location willing to take on any spoilage above and beyond that. Maybe you have minimum um, sales that you're expected on a monthly basis. So anything underneath that minimum sales, maybe you got to um, send an invoice to the location for anything above and beyond that. And then again, on the theft side, making sure that that is absolutely in that contract. Is anything above and beyond that 2%, hey, we're going to send you an invoice, but we're going to provide you, you know, all of the information of where we got to that theft number. Um, and the most important thing is that you as a vending company are providing really good service, really good food, uh, really good snack options. Um, so you're making it. Uh, to a point where like those employees need that micro market to perform at the level that that HR needs that micro market to keep the morale of the employees up. Um, so everything that, that we're talking about and the conversations we're having, it doesn't happen unless you are, as a vending company are providing very good service, very good products um, and all of that. Otherwise, you know, uh, it's going to be harder for you to kind of get those things within the contract there. Tony, can you kind of hit on the advances that we're making as a company with theft? Uh, I know we talked about going ahead, keeping it in the contracts, and then also what we've done. We were one of the early adopters of putting the red X on any type of abandoned cart. But, you know, one of the big parts, at least I've, I've seen, is between the smart locks, being able to control when the coolers are able to be opened, along with smart cafe. Uh, are you able to kind of hint at how how those for certain situations might even be better for anyone hesitant of placing a micro market into a large area that might be slightly open. Yeah. So I kind of take it back to, um, again, back when I was in the UK, um, one of my larger customers was over in Sweden and all 250 of the markets that we opened up there in Sweden, um, they're all set up the exact same way. So everything, uh, whether it was a dry ambient cabinet, or if it was a cooler or if it was a freezer, it all had a glass door. Um, and it was all locked using our TSM smart locks. Um, so there would be a kiosk in the middle and then you have your cooler, freezer, ambient, whatever it was. So the user would go up to the kiosk and they would log into the kiosk with their fingerprint, with the scan tag, with the email, with the password, whatever it was. And then all those units would unlock. So now the user you know, had already logged in, shown that their first name, last name, all their credentials. They would then go grab their items, bring them back, scan those items at the kiosk, finalize the payment, and then everything would lock again. So it deterred 
you know, uh, just anonymous users coming up to the kiosk, grabbing items, faking like they're scanning items. It did force every single user um, to have to have a market account uh, to then unlock the units and allow you to get in there. So that was one way that we set it up is um, all units to unlock on login. Um, and then we've also got a, a configuration in the back end where you can set it up to unlock on purchase. So it's actually going to make you finalize the uh, the purchase on the kiosk. So you'll select your items on the kiosk. You get your Snickers, your Gatorade, your chips, and then finalize that purchase. And then it's going to unlock those specific coolers or ambient units or freezers that those products are in. So you go in, grab your items, and then you're able to take off. So a couple of unique ways um, that we're trying to curb it on that side. And then, um, you know, what we've got going on the AI cooler side of it, um, I think is pretty exciting as well. Um, so that's going to allow the user to just tap their card, cooler unlocks, and then any of the items that you grab, it's then going to charge your card accordingly. So it's got cameras that are inside the cooler. And those uh, cameras have been trained on each one of the products that are inside. I mean, that's that's going to be a game changer. I don't know about you, Kyle, but just the different opportunities uh, going from just the enclosed environment, kind of we talked about a workplace, but being able to maybe go into more mall, open space mall places and bring operators there and get, get them right in there. I mean, the smart cooler will be, I mean, from seeing it at the NRF that I was recently at, it, it's going to be a game changer i believe no absolutely i think it's going to once again open open up the floodgates to the possibilities of where you can put this stuff on corners whatever the case may be wherever you can find a large group of people that people like to be around and possibly are hungry thirsty wherever the case is i think it opens up uh, the possibilities on where, where where you can put up new locations so i think that's great so i see eventually um these micro markets, we get that AI technology, you know, into these open market concepts. I think we see it right now with the Amazon Goes. We see it with the Git Zippin. Um, we see it with the Grab and Goes. You know, these are kind of being plugged into like airports, super high traffic areas because of how expensive they are. Um, but those costs are going to come down, you know, and I do see that technology eventually entering into our space of of micro markets, office workplace solutions. Um, and I'm excited for that. I don't know if it's going to be in the next three years. It's probably somewhere in the next five to 10 years, you know, where we start to see that trickle into our industry. Um, but that will be the same technology, you know, that we'll see across our workplaces. And then when you look at the super small micro markets, those will still be, you know, the same technology that we're using today where it's, Kind of an honor system and you grab your items, you scan them at the kiosk, um, and pay for them. But, uh, I think our industry, um, is, is primed to continue evolving and changing. And I think, uh, we've, we've learned that, you know, our, our industry likes to see new products, um, introduce new technologies, uh, but they do want it, you know, at a point where it works. So. Um, we'll let some of those other kind of uh, channels flush out any of the bugs and the issues. And by the time it gets into our vending industry, hopefully we get a nice product that uh, that, that can be plugged into to everyone's current operations. I uh, love to hear that. It's going to be, you know, over the next five to 10 years, it's going to be amazing on how much everything's changing from going to the smart coolers to possibly you know, in that five to 10 range, the, the Amazon type style micro market. I mean, that's, that's going to be crazy. Just thinking about it where right now it's still in testing phases, even if you look at it across at any type of a uh, convention. So. I think it's one of the cool things to kind of mention too, is just the fact that, you know, as micro markets continue to grow, cause we can all, I feel like we all confidently can say on this call that micro markets is the future. And as it's continued to grow the way it's kind of exploded, um, you know, you even have some operators kind of, you know, lowering the amount of vending accounts they have to kind of replace them with a higher, uh, you know, a, mar a micro market location that might be able to create more product, create more sales and different things like that. So, um, I think just speaking to the affordability of them as well, just because as we continue to get more techni technologically advanced and we begin to kind of pump out more and more markets, um, it definitely becomes more affordable at the end 
I mean, Tony, you've been uh, dealing with micro markets for years. Can you can you kind of speak to just kind of the cost of what it used to be to kind of start up your first ever micro market a couple of years ago to kind of now the affordability and just kind of the different terms and different things like that that can just help operators out that are looking to get going with markets? Um, yeah, I mean, when markets started, I think kiosks were selling for like $15,000 a piece. Um, so now you look at it in our Go Mini kiosk, you know, you can get for $1,500. Um, and that's just kind of the evolution of, of technology. And as more players come in, it creates more, more competition and drives prices down. Um, so yeah, I, I think very similar about, um, you know, what we'll see with, um, the Amazon, uh, the, the AI camera solutions, even smart coolers kind of as they're entering into our marketplace right now. Um, they're probably not the easiest return on investment that some of these vending operators can have right now, but, um, a lot of, and the reason that operators are still going with it is because they want to control that theft aspect so much um, that they're still willing to purchase it. But I do think that as we get more players involved, that we'll start to see the price of these smart coolers, super smart coolers, I guess you could say, um, come down considerably. And then, you know, what, what is the Amazon Go stores that are going for like $150,000, you know, just to get them set up right now? Um, I think we'll, we'll see that number come down significantly as that technology becomes more mainstream and, um, easier to install. I always talk about our, our vending industry. We like things. We like technology, but we like technology that's super simple. Um, if it's too complicated, it's not going to work in our industry. So, um, not only do we need the, the cost of the technology to come down, we also need to get the simplicity. Um, to a level where it's easy for us to scale and grow and, and then for our, you know, our techs that we have within our vending companies, be able to service this equipment. You don't need some big brainiac, um, you know, that comes with a big computer degree to be able to go and, and be on site with that equipment. We still have to have it kind of dumbed down to a point where it's, it's still very scalable with our current operations that we have in the vending industry keeping it super simple. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Cost effective and simple. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you, Tony, for being on this episode. Thank you. Thank you again, everyone else joining us on retail on the go. Be sure to follow and subscribe to our podcast and follow us on Instagram at retail on the go and on TikTok at cantaloupe.inc for exclusive content and news. This is Retail on the Go, signing off.